Alright guys, how you doing? This PC build today is going to be a mainstream build. The last one I did was an upper mid range and maybe some people thought it's a little bit rich for my tastes. However, I had actually aimed to make that the case. It had sort of like a feeling of being higher end and that put it on the higher end of the price range, yeah? This one's going to look a little bit more like a mainstream price range. So I'm targeting around about $750, which will probably come in around £550, £600. So we'll see how that one works out. Right, the first thing I'm going to say is, what you're going to see here is how important it is to jump in there when the prices are good. For example, in my entry level build, we got this Corsair Carbide Spec 02 for $47. Now it's up to $60, it doesn't look like quite such a good deal. For that reason, and I'm not really all that keen on doing this, but for that reason, I have decided that we're actually going to have a regression in case quality here. <laughs> I mean, the main difference between the Spec 01 and the Spec 02 is that blue USB port, yeah? The Spec 02 has got two USB 3 ports at the front. I don't really think it's that important and certainly not worth $11. You've got an extra fan at the bottom as well underneath with the Spec 02. You're not going to need it in a build like this. So for me, in America, at $49, the Corsair Carbide Series Spec 01 is the case of my choice. Now it's a similar story in the UK. You can pick up the Spec 01 for £43 and the Spec 02 is that little bit more expensive, which I'm not sure is worth it. However, you may actually have a look at the Spec 03 right now at £50, so that's only, what, £6 more expensive? This really comes down to, do you like the look of this? It's got a bit more of a kind of fierce look about it, whereas the 01's that little bit more kind of streamlined looking. There's not an awful lot of difference in the cases otherwise, yeah, again, you're talking this extra USB 3 port at the front, which to me, I don't even know why anybody needs a single USB 3 port, in all honesty. But you know what it's like, yeah, bigger is better. So that's your choice. Either go with the 1 or the 3. I have decided just to go with the 1 here and save on money. Now, once again, we're going to go with the Seasonic S12 to 520W bronze power supply. The reason for this is simple. It's the same as last time around. This power supply will allow you to use practically any single graphics card, yeah? And even though we're going for something mainstream right now, you may decide in the future, that you want something a bit meatier. The price is okay, and as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's just about worth paying it. Now, we're going to be saving a bit of money again in the UK because, once again, I'm going to go for the Aerocool Integrator 600 watt. This is a true 600 watt power supply. It's just not quite as high quality as the Seasonic one, yeah? However, at the price of it, this is unmatchable. A 600 watt power supply for £30.50, we get very, very few of these deals in the UK, <laughs> so you should grab them when you do get them. Once again, this will be more than good enough to handle any single graphics card, if you do decide you want that in the future. I had quite a long think about what CPU to go with. My original plan was to go with an FX8 core, like the 8350 or the 8320. Again, the reasoning being DirectX 12 titles, there's a good chance that the FX CPUs will overtake the i5 CPUs. And they are cheaper, however their power draw is really quite bad. In the end, I just could not justify it. They're very powerful when all cores are used, but you rarely see that in games. And in too many games, they just lag behind the i5s. And even the i3s, some of the higher end FX CPUs, they can't even beat the i3s in gaming. It's not really the fault of the CPU, again, it's just the way that games went. But I just cannot justify it. So I've kind of gone with a safe option here. And I really made this decision because the price is actually pretty decent. You're getting an i5-4590 for $185 now. This one looks like the best price performance one right now. For example, the i5-4460 is $182. I mean, that's just a no-brainer choice. Again, the Skylake, the 6600s, they're a little bit overpriced right now. And it sort of locks you into going with DDR4 to really make use of it. And you just find that the costs start to spiral up for what is effectively zero gain. Once again, it's the same CPU in the UK, £156. And for me, this is the, the better price performance Intel i5 CPU at today's prices. Now, that does mean that we're not really going to be pushing it with overclocking because it's a non-K CPU. So we're going to save a little bit on the motherboard. Right now, the prices of the B85s in the USA are not all that awesome. However, it's all you really need. This was probably the sensible one to go with. You've got four memory channels. You've got all your USB 3 and your SATA 3 stuff, yeah? Not awesomely priced at all at $65. In the UK, the ASRock B85M Pro 3 at £47 looks like it is the best deal by quite a distance. Again, you're getting all the features like your USB 3 and your SATA 3. And again, the four memory channels. This will be important as you'll see next. 
Now, in the last video, I suggested only going for one single 8GB DDR3 stick. However, with a bit of hindsight, and after refraction in the comments basically mentioned it, it's probably not been the best decision that I made in the last build. When you've got those four memory channels, you may as well just go with the 4 gigabyte times 2 sticks, especially when they're actually cheaper than the 1 times 8. My thinking in the last build was, because it's sort of more towards the high end, you may actually decide you want to put 32 gigabyte in there eventually. For me, it's a nonsense, yeah, you'll never need that amount of memory. However, it was sort of at the back of my mind, well, maybe you know you're going to do something that would be able to make use of all that memory. In a build like this, though, you've got your four memory channels. You may as well just go with the two four gigabyte sticks. You're never going to need more than 16 gigabyte of memory, yeah? So if you do decide you do want 16 gigabytes, just buy the same again. It actually works out a little bit cheaper than the one times eight gigabyte stick. Again, we're going with the Crucial Ballistic Sport because they have the lowest latency out of all the DDR3 1600 memories. Again, it's the same in Britain, the exact same kit, £32. Now, onto the graphics card. In my entry level, I chose the R7370 graphics card, yeah? And in my upper mid-range, I chose the R9390. So, probably not going to come as a massive surprise that in between it, I've gone with the R9380. While I could sort of make a case for the GTX 970 in the previous build, it's a little bit more difficult making a case here for the GTX 960. You're going to be playing 1080p, yeah? If we go over to Tech Power Up again, you can see here that the R9380, over about 15 games, is about 17% faster than the GTX 960. And that's a 2 gigabyte version. I actually gave the GTX 960 the win in my April head-to-head. -head. However, as time has gone on, AMD sort of made a few improvements with the R9380 compared to the R9285, yeah, which is practically the same card. And now you can get it in 4 gigabyte versions. After a rebate for $205, that's not bad. Again, you're paying $200, so f only $5 less for the 4 gigabyte GTX 960. The 380 is a smart choice here by far. The FreeSync compatibility is a really nice bonus as well if you do decide that you're going to go with a FreeSync monitor. In the UK, it looks like the ASUS R9380 Strix Gaming is the card to get. £174, you're just getting that little bit more performance over the 960. And my belief is that you'll see the 380 pull further away from the 960 as time goes on. So once again, this is a smart option. Once again, I'm going to go with the Samsung 850 EVO. I thought about going with the 120GB, however, for $20. No, this isn't like the entry level build where you're trying to save every penny, yeah? The sweet spot for sure is 250GB, it'll give you plenty of room. Once again in the UK, very nice price, looks like it's come down in price since last time as well. This is a solid state drive to buy. Once again, there's almost zero movement in the hard drive prices, you're looking for the cheapest one terabyte desktop hard drive, which once again appears to be the Seagate in the US, and once again in Britain, it's a Western Digital Blue. Right, the final step is the aftermarket cooling. Even though you're not overclocking, the Intel stock cooler is a loud, noisy disaster, and anything at all is basically going to be better than it. In this case, I've decided to go with the newer Arctic Freezer i11. I would rather have went with the Cooler Master Evo, however, that does not fit into the case again. So if you want a smaller CPU cooler that does the job nice and quiet, then the Arctic Freezer i11 will do the job just fine. Now, the same cooler in Britain is a little bit expensive at £20, so by all means go for the Freezer 13, which is a better cooler at almost the same price. It's pretty difficult to find reviews on this Freezer i11, but because it's newer, it may actually be quieter. Even though the Freezer 13 can dissipate a bit more power, you might decide that you don't really need that sort of cooling performance in a non-overclock system anyway, yeah? So you can make that choice between the i11 and the Freezer 13. In the US though, the Freezer 13 is a little bit more expensive. I would certainly just go with the Freezer i11 in that case. Right guys, so that is my December 2015 mainstream PC build. What I would say is that it is solid if unspectacular, but that's pretty much what the mainstream should be anyway, isn't it? You've got a decent case in the Carbide Spec 01. Once again, I've gone with a power supply that will let you upgrade your graphics card in future. Something like that is really important to me. The i5-4590, it's got that solid, unspectacular feeling about it again. I didn't really want to make this another overclocking PC build. You start going down that route, you start noticing the price goes up, you know you're going to need a better motherboard as well, you're going to need a better cooler. Before you know it, your $750 PC is more like $850, at which point you're thinking, well, why don't I just push out the boat even further to the upper mid-range? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I did want to have that decent break of the $250 between the upper mid range and the mainstream. The choice of graphics card, it's got a kind of no brainer look about it. I dislike the 960 now, it's got that tiny little 128 bit memory bus and the 380 looks like it's a far more solid choice again. Another solid choice in the solid state drive of the 250 EVO and that's pretty much it. The total price came in at 754 US dollars, so that's not bad, and 586 UK pounds, so I did say 550, 600 pounds, and it's very much a solid mainstream performing PC. Once again, if you disagree with any of my choices, let me know in the comments below. Or, if you've got any questions about any of these parts, or any PC questions in general, just fire away in the comments below, and either me or one of the other guys are sure to answer. As always, there's going to be links in the description to all these parts on Amazon, so if you're looking for a mainstream PC and want to buy the parts off Amazon, feel free to help out the channel by using the links below. It costs you absolutely nothing, and unlike Amazon, I do tend to pay my taxes. I'll catch you later, guys.